Welcome, my name is Greg Rasafi. I'm Technical Support Manager for Blaco Fluid Control. Today we're going to talk about um, pulsation dampeners, charging and using them and how they're placed in their particular systems. We're going to go through each one of them, uh, adjustable, automatic and chargeable and also our J model. First of all, all of the pulsation dampeners work best if they are located at the discharge of the pump within 10 pipe diameters. Each one of the pulsation dampeners will need to be charged properly depending on the discharge pressure that the pump is going to provide. If you are running at 100 PSI, 80% of that is, is going to be the choice area to charge the unit prior to running the system. If you run your pump system without the pulsation dampener being charged, what's going to happen is you'll wear the bladder out over time. Initially it's not going to be an issue, but you don't want to do that. You want to make sure it's charged properly prior to running your system. Having a dampener placed at the discharge of the pump within 10 pipe diameters will allow you to get the best dampening available with that pulsation dampener. One thing that you can do is to place an isolation valve at the discharge of each pump where you're going to locate your pulsation dampener. This will be twofold. It will allow you to turn the pulsation dampener on and off if you need to and isolate it from your system. Also, if you need to change the bladder, it will allow you to be able to continue to run your system even though you may not have a pulsation dampener in the system. The second thing that you'd like to do is to make sure that you have a gauge that is placed downstream, whether it be an isolated gauge from a, with a diaphragm so that you can see where your pulsation dampening is best achieved. That, uh, that's going to be important to get your best dampening, especially with your, when you're using an adjustable or chargeable model so you can see how best to charge it. Using nitrogen and compressed air will be the best way to charge your pulsation dampener. Generally, pressures over 100 to 120 are best used uh, with compressed air, shop air is, is generally used. Never use oxygen for pressures greater than 120 psi you can use nitrogen, compressed uh, dry nitrogen will allow you to go into the higher pressures. Always be aware of the, the maximum pressures that each one of the pulsation dampeners have. Each one of the dampeners will have a manufacturer's um, tag on it, which will also provide you the maximum pressure, the serial number for the unit, the model number, and who has assembled it and tested it and put it in the box to ship it to your location. Each one of these items will be placed on the dampener so that you can uh, reference that later on. It's best to keep that information for each one of the pulsation dampeners if possible. The pressure ratings on each one of these pulsation dampeners is based on a, an ambient temperature. Make sure that you take into account temperatures when applying pressure to each one of these pulsation dampeners. Some of the plastic units will have to reduce their pressures as temperatures increase. 